Alright, uh, this is my second time recording this because I already did it. Um, but here's just a quick overview of menstruations and how they work. Um, where, where these markings are stored. Um, th this is mainly just for clones, by the way. Uh, other stuff does use menstruations, but not in the same way the clones do. Um, so, we'll go down the markings. You'll notice how there's a whole bunch of textures here. Um, and you'll see this is just a mumble jumbo of things. Um, on the red channel, you will notice how um, this is the body markings. Green is the phase 2 helmet markings. And the blue channel is the phase 1 helmet markings. And you can see with the alpha on, it's uh, pure red, green, and blue. Um, now, if you wanted something like this, you would go over to Photoshop. I already have that there, but um, here's what this all looks like. Um, yeah. <laughs> For example, if you wanted something off of like, um, I've already kind of messed these up, but we'll go, we'll go in here. We'll get this. This is kind of be doing it in reverse, but uh, you would take all the brown markings. This is only for the 327th, by the way, because only the 327th has um, two colors. You take all the brown. All the brown. Um. Create a new layer for it, shift control N, control C, control V, and then you create another new layer. That one right there. And then fill that entire layer with black. So now you're left with this. Um, I'm gonna go in close get rid of of some of this white. Um, get rid of some of that white. That's good enough. Um, so you take that, um, and then you'll notice um, we'll flatten these two. Go down layer, flatten image. Um, no, we actually flattened the whole thing. Can I just select two to be flattened? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, you go down the channels. So this is for the body. Um, so we have to make it absolute red. So we'll go to red. And then we'll get out white. Um, and then we'll just... That's not right more efficient way to do this is just to get rid of all the other colors really so go to zero zero um, we'll go down to green get rid of all the green and the blue get rid of all the blue and so red isn't all the way bright yet but uh, you can fix that just by going to adjustments brightness bring that up so now you have absolute, basically red markings. Um, they should be basically blank by now. And then um, to put this, to try, kind of turn this into something like this, we would get. Where did I just put it? The hell? Oh, it's over here. We would open something like the D twelfth over here. Um. Actually, this is a bad example. I want to open up a helmet, the 27th helmet in this case. So this is the brown, so we'll take the brown from this too, because all the brown stored are one thing. Quick selection. Um, it's like that whole thing. Oh, it's, it's transparent in there, so it doesn't matter. Um, select the rest of this brown. <laughs> Selected too much. Actually, no, that's good. 
Um, create a new layer for that. It doesn't matter if we just draw black on the base layer because it's, it's going to fly in both of them anyway. So you just take that. So then you're left with this. Let's just delete those two little pieces of... Um, it's not actually... Got the magic wand. Delete that. Delete that. Okay. So now we want to do the same process. We want to get rid of all the red, green, and blue. We, uh, we want. Well, in this case, phase two is on green, so we want. We want to get rid of the red and the blue of it. Yeah, so left with that, then we can head over to green, image, just bring its brightness, make this brighter. It's not all the way, but at this point, it's almost 100% uh, green, flatten this. And then uh, to merge these, we'll have to, we don't have to do this, I guess, but uh, you, you need to bring them down to 1024 because these markings are actually only... Um, 1024 by 1024. Uh, but yeah, we would select this whole thing. And then bring that over to the other one we just had. Right here. Oh, that only did that. Wait, is this the wrong one? Oh, this is already 1024. Oh, so we do have to bring this down. Image, image size. So you would select this entire green over here, paste it here. Uh, why is it showing like that? I guess we paste it into the green channel itself. Yeah, that's what you do. Paste into the channel itself. So then you're left with this, and it's kind of transparent. Um, cause it's stacked like this. And then yeah, you have your marking, and it's 1024, you just import that into your game, and then you have that. To control the colors of what they are, you go down to each specific one, go to its object variation, mesh material variation, vector, um, for 104 there's only one color, so there's just one here. To convert these, um, you take, you put this number in your calculator, and then you um, multiply by the exponent 0 0.4545 and then you multiply the whole thing by 255 and then you'll get your RGB value um, I mean for red and then you'll do it for green and then you do it for blue because XYZ is red, green, and blue um, so you do that to convert the other way you go into your color and then you'll take this, uh, divide that by 255, and then multiply by the exponent 2.2, and then you have your linear float. So that's how you do that. Um, to add, I'll gloss over meshes and add in variations to the meshes real fast. Um, you'll head over to your Visual unlock for the officer, which is in um, off officer prequel, officer equal one. And you'll see a visual unlock root acid. For our heroes, it's usually the blueprint bundle, but for normal characters, it's usually the visual unlock root acid. Visual unlock acids, and you'll see there's how many of these? Four. Normally, the officer has the hand in its own object blueprint. And then, um, I'll, I'll just kind of just kind of reset so it's how it's normally set up. So go back. See, so it has this hand blueprint. No variations on this. It has a variation and a mesh for its hat. Um, it's got uh, just the head blueprint. It's got 
variation for its legs. And then it's got its torso blueprint. Um, so, um, before going any further, I have to make it clear that if there's two instances of mesh variation pairs inside of your visual unlock assets, then you can only add one more. Um, you can't add two more, you can only add one more. So, for example, for the Arc Trooper, there's only one instance, so you can only have two. So, you, um, for the Arc Trooper, you could only have, by default, it has the glove variation, so you could only have the glove variation and a variation on the assault mesh. If you added one more, it would crash or not show up. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to find VURs that don't have any mesh variation pairs, and then you just boned. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so you wanted to give the officer a helmet. We would go over to this, which has the hat and the variation for the hat. We would instead swap it for the assault helmet mesh, and then go down to markings, 327, give it its helmet object variation marking. So we do that, and then that marking could be whatever you want it to be. It can be the marking that we just made, and it can be the marking that we just changed the color of. It, you can do whatever you want with them. All right. Um, so you actually need to change. Um, if you want to change the color of like a whole class, you would have to go in. I mean, a whole legion, you have to go in each mesh material variation and change every single vector. So it takes a while. But, uh, yeah. Um, and th this over here, that, that's mesh swap. I just swapped out some officer's head, um, officer's hat for the helmets. And then also another note for mesh variation pairs, you can't, if you don't want one, you don't just delete these two. You, um, cause that crashes the game. If you're, you can't void a mesh variation pair. You can void an out object blueprint, but you can't void a mesh variation pair. So like, just make it so that you don't have to void any of these. So just put an object blueprint here. And then in a later object blueprint, you can just void it. So for four, you can just void that last one and it will not crash. Um, but yeah, never avoid mesh perturbations. Uh, that covers, I think, everything, you know. Um, if you want to have the whole clone body on the officer, you just go down to legs and a very, you know, one that has a variation. You get the whole mesh. And then you get the variation for it. So this, since this only had two, and we've already used two, we can only use one more. Um, and so we would go over to the ellipses on the head blueprint, and then you would click one of these, doesn't matter which one, and that creates a mesh variation pair for you, and it references one that you've already done, and so you just swap these out, so, um, our, it references the one that did up here, and so I don't actually want the helmet again, I want the visor, per se, or the gloves, rather, because you need the gloves. Um. Uh, Body parts, gloves of five is clones. You add in the gloves mesh, and then the black variation for it. And this is a different object variation. Um, yeah. There you go. That's how you swap meshes for normal characters. In a nutshell, uh, most of it should work unless it's not loaded on something. Like for example, the phase one helmet is not loaded in the main menu and they loaded on Camino, and the heavy visor is not loaded on Camino offline. So, just some random notes on that. Um, I'll put the equations once again for converting stuff in the description. And yeah.